Hello, people of the internet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, a happy Friday to you all. Hopefully you are wrapping up your week nicely, whether that's uh, wrapping up your work week or your school week, well, or even getting an early start to the weekend. Hope you're having a good day today. Let us continue with the Loose Symbol debut slash Luna 512's re-debut with the EP. The Loose Symbol EP. The self-titled EP, which um, I don't even know if we can call it an EP because this is an eight-song album. Well, technically a seven plus one mini album as a debut. That's really impressive. Admittedly, the last track isn't the English version of Sensitive, but still, that's a long album for a re-debut or a debut full stop. And that's not the best part about this debut because I have... A little cheat sheet here, which um, I've quickly taken notes on. I primarily want to talk about the credits on this album. And typically, before I start every single song on an album list and we go and read off all the album credits and things like that, unfortunately, I don't have the capacity for that at the moment, like technologically. I just don't have enough screens for that. Um, but I've taken down the most important notes, and that is every single member in the group participated in composition credits or at least lyrically, has gotten involved with composition on this album. That is so cool. And as part of a group, to have every single member involved in the composition in some way, shape, or form, that's almost unheard of. That's so cool. So we'll be reading off all the important ones. I think it's all the B-sides where the members have some form of lyric involvement in, which is very cool. In fact, there's also a special extra Luna member that's involved in this. If you've been following along, you know who it is, but we'll get to it when we get to it. If you're new around here, you've never been to an album listen before. We run through every single song on the album. Typically, we skip the title track. We might run through this title track again just because I really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, Time on Below is going to be chapter based off whatever song we're listening to, so you can skip ahead to a song of your choice whenever you feel like it. But let's get started real quick. DJ, roll the intro. Righto, song number one off a of Lucembe self-titled EP. Intro, searching for their friends. Now, it I'm, I'm not, I mentioned it in the um, MV video, but I am not the biggest Luna lorehead out there. I never really like took the time to learn it and things like that. But of the little things I could make out from the title track MV. It really does, you really get the sensation of this is, like, these five are part of a bigger project. And this is now become an adventure to try and reunite all 12 pieces together, which is very cool. Especially with that, like, uh, sleeping uh, hibernation chamber scene at the end of the MV. Oh my goodness, I get goosebumps just thinking about it. But intro, searching for their friends. Here we go. Okay, so it's an intro for the title track. It's not for the album. Okay. Okay, because then that would usually be followed by that funk bass coming back into play for the chorus from the title track. Okay, okay. So we have an extension of the title track. I'm okay with that. That, that string opening was kind of glorious. As someone who grew up playing in string quartet and string orchestra, it's like it was made for me. It was made for me. It's something about that string opening. It's very pretty, but the chords used in it are not very bright, and it does. there is like a very lingering feeling of ominous, of like an ominous sensation going on, and that's very cool. That's very cool. There's a slight hint of dissonance in that first chord. 
It's very cool. And then it just switches gears into that funk beat. So I'm down for that. I'm down for that. And you know what? Usually I skip it, but because I want to, and this is my channel, I can do what I want. Oh yeah, you. I tried looking for lyric videos for all of these. Um, at the time of recording, not all the B-sides have lyric videos out yet. That's why we're just doing the YouTube music versions of it, so I apologize for that. Because I know the MV didn't have lyrics on it either. That first post chorus, exquisite. This song vocally just has so many layers going on. But yeah, if you kind of really deep the song, the moments where it gets really complex and really minimal is very drastic. A little slap bass action going now. This song rips! I want more of that post chorus. <laughs> that post chorus is actually very good. I don't know if it'll make the mo like moments in songs list at the end of the year. It's going to make the like, girl group debut of the year short list, 100%. And honestly, I don't really know where it's going to end up because there have been a few really good girl group debuts this year. Most notably, um, there's been three Triple S debuts this year already. We're about to have a fourth with Evolution in like a month. OEC had a comeback, although I probably won't classify that as a debut. I'll pro that'll probably end up being a comeback rather than a re-debut. Yeah, this is going to be close. This is a different type of music in terms of, like, the other debutantes out on the list. Like, I'm going to use Triple S as an example just because I know for a fact all three, uh, like, unit title songs are on that shortlist right now. Very different stylistically. Like, this is a song that takes two very different extremes, the really elaborate and the really minimal there's really no in-between. You get one or the other, and they've put it in one project all together. And musically, it's very complex. Especially once it gets really elaborate and big. That's, that's very exciting. But, 
of course, we still have, what is it, five and a half, six more songs to go. So let us move on. Real World with Miss Heju on lyrics. This is not the song I would have thought would come attached to a... I'm pretty sure that's a... George Gershwin clarinet sample. This pre-course is also providing kind of another style switch on its own. Hold on now. Oh, there is a hint of that jazzy smoothness in this. That little... Oh, hello, Cadence. Yeah, getting, getting the Rhapsody in Blue segment scattered around the song is really interesting. The second time uh, in the history of the channel that someone sampled Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue, because Red Velvet's birthday also sampled it. This is not a straightforward song at all. Do you hear all the movement in the vocal part? This is different. This is very different. It's, I wonder if this is going to be an entire album that's just very stylistically different. Mm. Yeah, real world. Like the sample of George Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue, and it's a very specific part. It's... It's not that iconic intro that everyone knows. It's not that part. It's the part that comes afterwards. But it's not there just to say it's there. This entire song has that influence of that kind of like jazz attitude to the song. Whether it's the not so straightforward chords here and there. The little flourishes, like both rhythmically and melodically, aren't very straightforward pop at all. But having that kind of big style switch, as a, especially in the verses, as a pretty rap-dominant song, really interesting spin. And one that, honestly, I kind of welcome. Just knowing who's involved in this project, I can see why they, they go for a rap-heavy project like this. I'm on board. And also, congratulations, Ms. Heju, on getting uh, lyric credits on this. Love to see it. Love to see it. I've said it on, I think, every single project 
that's had a member or artist writing their own thing. It just does feel a lot more personal to the artist performing it if they're directly involved with the music. And this isn't like a dig against those who don't. Just saying this is like praising the ones that do, if that makes sense. So, well done, well done. Next up, coloring, spelled the British way with the extra U, also with lyrics written by Vivian Yojin. Man, imagine, imagine that. You would never get that during Luna days. I thought we were going to get something a little bit like Hyunjin's solo. No, the beats kicked in a little bit. Oh, it's very smooth. And this song very involved, lots of different moving parts. This like little kick in the feeling of the song for this pre-chorus is a really interesting choice. Nice use of the vocal effect there. And then it goes into this nice smooth R&B-esque beat. I almost kind of want the second half of the chorus to kick into that double time again. I'm not mad that it's in this slower pace though. It's like this song, for me, I would love to hear what it sounds like the double time percussion part, like for the entire thing. Coloring is a very interesting song to listen to. Because for me personally, it does ride that line between is it a slow song or is it a fast song? Because we get both, and that is what trips me up a little bit, is the fact that throughout the song, there are moments where it does kick into that double time beat. And I like that pace of the double time feeling. I reckon the original intent is that slower beat, but with the entire song being that slower beat, maybe it might feel like it drags on a little bit too long. So that's why they inject that little double time section into it. But I have nothing wrong to, about the song. Like, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with the song for me. And I'll listen to that. In fact, that slower beat almost gives it kind of a late night vibe to it, which is a type of music that I've been getting into a little bit more recently. It's like my musical tastes have started leaning in that direction. Maybe it's a seasonal thing. I don't know. It's definitely getting colder out. But yeah, it's like because we got that very short snippet of what that song would feel like in its faster phrase and want to hear more of it, it's like what you've opened Pandora's box and you can't really close it anymore, or like you've reached into the cookie jar and you've you've tasted what the other side is like, and now you just want more of it. That's how I feel about it. 
but I like though. It's that's that beginning definitely surprised me a little bit. Cause it's immediately when you think, oh, you've locked onto it, the song just switches up just enough to throw you off the scent. And then it switches back. And then it flips again. And then it switches back. Keeps you on your tools. But what do we have next? This is Newtopia with Miss Koan on lyrics. Halftime. It's it's not a okay. Another song that's writing that halftime double timeline. Oh, this is like 90% to a retro synth song, and I'm so here for it. It's just very nice. It's very nice. There isn't too much to talk about for this one so far. It just kind of flows really naturally. Oh! Oh, they're keeping the pace for the bridge, okay. I thought maybe they cut it into halftime for the bridge, but no. Or is this the bridge? Does this have two bridges? And then straight through into the final chorus. Oh, that was interesting. We're still going. Oh my goodness. That's why it's a three and a half minute song. Jesus. Okay. Two things. One, until that bridge happened, this was by far the easiest song to follow along to. There wasn't too much going on in terms of like really drastically switching it back and forth. Once you get the hang of the beat, you're pretty much on for the ride. Did not expect that bridge to be that long. I also might think now in hindsight that it was actually a post course attached to a bridge, and that's why it felt like a two part bridge. But another thing that I didn't clock on until now is all five members are equally capable of vocals as well as rapping. So this is, this, at the end of the day, could evolve into a five-member rap group in certain songs, which is very cool because it allows for a lot of flexibility when it comes to their music. Like, five wildly different vocal tones, all of them capable of really smooth vocals and really nice rap verse. 
that is going to be really cool to follow along with because that really opens the door for the music team behind this group to do kind of whatever they want. Like there, there may be some songs where it's like, you know, maybe Koan, uh, BB and Yojin on reps. There might be songs where it's just Heju and Hyunjin on rap. Maybe there's a song where it's just BB and Yojin on reps. The combinations are endless. Well, I know there's a mathematical answer for it, but for practical sake, the combination of the rapper lineup in a loose symbol song is endless. Because you have so many com different combinations that you can put in, whether it's one, two, three, four, or even all five people put together. That is so cool. Ooh, okay. Utopia. Is this... Before we get started, Strawberry Soda, written by and composed in part by Miss Ivu. Ivu. Ibu, uh, who's doing a lot of behind-the-scenes music stuff now, as well as some modeling stuff, um, is also the final member of the original Luna 12 that is yet to really, like, permanently announce what direction uh, they're going to go in. Like, you have the five members of Lucembol at CTD, you have Chu doing her own thing, that makes six, and then you have the five artist members at Modhouse. Eve is the only one that hasn't stated their intent on if they're going to sign with the company or not. The only thing she has announced is that she is part of the music team uh, over at, I think, the composition team called Nine as... Oh, what is the official position that she has now? But she's doing, like, compositional stuff now. Composition and A&R, and that's really cool. And uh, her first project... A loose symbol piece I titled Strawberry Soda. And she's already promoting it on Instagram and stuff like that, so let's check this one out. Hello, synthesizers. It's like a, it's like the light-hearted uh, distant sibling of the title track for me. It's got that funky beat to it, but it's significantly brighter. Nice long chorus too. Chorus and post chorus, nice chunk of the song man. Very bright and bubbly, much like what a strawberry soda is like. Compositionally though, this song is also another one of those that's very straightforward. Nice soft entry into the post-chorus bridge. Bridge. Let that Hyunjin high note ring a little bit before the final chorus, okay.
Huh? Honestly, I wasn't expecting a song like of this level of lightheartedness on this album. I'm not mad at it though. It's you know for a group that has a lot of well, what has two of the youngest Luna members in it? The kind of cutesy sound works for me, and on, with this group especially, the cutesy sound kind of works for me because no one in here has like the really powerful belting high note capabilities. Not like what Chu and like Heej or Hazel or Lip. Essentially, like anyone you really think about when they had like the really high high notes. You don't really have in this lineup. They all have pretty soft voices when it comes to singing. So having a kind of cutesier sound like this really works in their favor. Nice. And I think in terms of the composition, this, I think at this point in the album, is the easiest to follow, like full stop. It's a very simple, nice, gentle synth pop song that has kind of traces of city pop hidden away in it, especially with the instrumentation choices, but is very much a casual kind of walk in, the, walk in the park, a walk down the street through the neighborhood type of vibe, and I really like it. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Day by day. Uh, our crew commander, Miss Hyunjin on lyrics. I like the crunchy guitar already. Okay. For as kind of firm as the instrumental and especially the launch pad beat in the song is, it's a surprisingly tame song. This pre-chorus is very pretty though. I love the broad chords in it. and the high day by day to send it into the chorus. kind of petered off of that final phrase in that line there. Nice. There's the guitar. Good to see ya. That's a solid song. That's a very solid song. 
It's okay. So next is the English version of Sensitive, which means oh shoot, this is the end of the album. Listen, oh dang, okay. Um, day by day, I like it. I like it. It's that kind of uplifting anthemy vibe. Is always very nice. It's always gonna be a good time for me. I would have, I wouldn't have been mad at a little bit more of that rock guitar, that crunchy guitar. I think if we would have gotten kind of like a emo rock anthem in a way, like a proper emo rock anthem in a way, I wouldn't have been mad at it. But I'm not mad at this version of Day by Day either. It's vocally definitely the highest song on the album, especially with that, you know, Day by Day attack going into the chorus. Like that is... D, D, C sharp, D, up there. And it's definitely, again, the vocal, in vocal range terms, the highest song on the album. But it's another one of those songs where they're able to get away with the really high vocals, but not require the vocal power at that top. And that is the big thing about kind of this entire Lucembo album, is the fact that the music team really understood the abilities that the five members bring to the table. And for me, Day by Day is the best showcase example of that. Because this song, even with all the high vocal moments, still encapsulates vocally what is the strength of everyone involved here. It's got all the high notes, never requiring the full power belting. So instead of the high notes being like front and center, the high notes kind of creates the like air around the full extent of the upper range of the song. It's got the kind of emotional attitude that, at least for me, that a ballad would have instilled and how pop albums usually end with a ballad. It, it's a way to kind of set the album the entire project back down to the ground, bring it back down to earth, nice, soft, cushy landing. Day by Day very much does feel like a an encore piece at like a concert or you know, a final song on the album where it does feel like the first chapter has come to a close, but it's in a way where it's not super sappy. And it's almost empowering in a way. Again, had I had lyric videos for these, probably would have understood the meaning behind the songs a little bit better and honestly give it like 30 minutes after I probably finish recording and all the b-sides will probably have lyric videos but it's just a time constraint thing that we didn't have them which is slightly unfortunate but we make do with what we have at the end of the day we just sat through an entire like long EP of five members of Luna as part of Loose Symbol and it's just such an enjoyable time and it makes me so happy. Oh. Now, musically, is this my favorite album that's dropped this year? I don't know. There are definitely songs on here that I resonate with more than others. That title, Sensitive, genuinely is going to live rent free in my head. Like that walking bass line has no business being that smooth. Um. Strawberry Soda, followed up by Day by Day, is actually a really interesting combo. They both have kind of like that youthful teenage vibe to it. Just one is very bright and happy, and one is a little bit more angstier. But they both encapsulate that vibe really well. But ultimately, at the end of the day, this is a collection of five members of Luna, the original from the original 12. Most of whom we really never got to properly experience up until this point. They've, they've gotten a chance to shine for a musical project like properly and have gone and grasped the bull by its horns and absolutely rode with it. It's so cool. And it makes me so happy as a long time orbit to finally be able to experience properly what these members can do musically. And this is the tip of the iceberg for them. Give, give them a couple releases and this is going to feel like this was always how it's been 
And honestly, I'm so proud of them, man. I'm so proud and I'm so happy that they've made a return in some way, shape, and form. And it's... Honestly, CTT, if you can keep up this level of artist involvement in their music, please do it. Honestly, please do it. It's so cool. And I can't imagine what it feels like to, you know, have your own name on a musical project of this magnitude. That must feel so good. That must feel so cool. But that is it for me with this Loose Symbol album. I cannot wait to see all the interactions behind the scenes. Like, you know, we're going to have music show stuff going on. And you, like, they've already posted about the Loose Symbol, like, title track and stuff on Instagram stories. And I bet they've done it on messaging apps and stuff. But I am waiting for the day. I am waiting for the day when the old Luna Ensemble has the inevitable crossover. Like, we've had, we've had Chu and Eve on the um, CTD Field Day, that series uh, that's gone on on the Loose Symbol YouTube channel. We've seen the artist me Artemis members, you know, collaborating in-house with the Triple S members. That crossover is inevitable. Like, Loose Symbol, Artemis, and then whenever Chu decides uh, to have her debut and whatever Eve ends up doing, that crossover is inevitable. They're like knowing the people responsible for Lucembol, for Artemis, and well, Chu and uh, Eve. I know for a fact that a reunion, like a lunar reunion, in some way. Is probably closer than we think. And that's tremendously exciting. Because Luna will forever be a 12-member girl group. It just will. It, there's no skirting around the fact Luna will always be that 12-member group. And I can't wait for the day that we get to see that crossover happen. But in the meantime, I, I feel like I already started the outro, but I kind of had a second thought and rambled over it. So we'll try again. Thank you all for watching along with me. Hopefully you enjoyed it uh, as much as I did. One last request from me today. Let us work together as a community to bring a little bit of extra happiness back into the world. Whether it be, you know, checking with your friends and family, holding the door open for somebody, or even picking up a piece of trash off the street. Just one small act of kindness to may brighten up someone else's day to day. And know that wherever you are in the world, should you ever be going through a tough time in your life, for whatever reason it may be, even though I'm just some guy on the internet who waffles about music in his free time, know that I will always be a friend, ally, a shoulder to lean on whenever you need me. So take care of yourselves, take care of each other, spread the love, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!